Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the latest. This is the penultimate suburbs edition of the uh, Gunners Town podcast because we are going into hibernation over the uh, uh, off-season, post-season, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I like to call it the greatest six weeks of my life because I can put this current season into the bin. Uh, I am joined today, as always, by the wonderful, the fantabulous, the marvellous Ben Leader. I'm not saying oh, anything. I uh, thought that was Steve. <laughs> yeah, well, that was Steve. That was for you, mate. Right? How are you doing, man? You're right. I'm very good. I'm very and good. We might as well say that someone else has to be on here because it's got to be a trio. So, Steve Othen, um, welcome, I guess. You all right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this show on the road as usual with the 30 uh, minute timer started. Um, and we are going to have to talk about this. I think we should have a few minutes on the season, but let's focus on the most recent game. I guess we have to, which is the Watford game. Uh, Steve, I'm, I'll tell you what, we're going we're gonna to do a quick game uh, before we actually talk about the Watford game. Um, it's true or false. I'll start with uh, Ben. Uh, we have to do a say true or false, obviously. Uh, Obamiang is good. True. Steve, David Luiz is bad. True. Ben, Rob Holding is bad. Uh, false. That is not false. You're wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Steve, <laughs> Arsenal are bad. True. Yeah, geez, these, these are so contextual, but <laughs> yeah, true. True. Um, ben, the FA Cup on Saturday is very scary. True. And the final one for Steve, Pepe is better than God. False. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Watford. So we've established that David Luiz and Rob Holding are bad, that we are terrified of what's going to happen next weekend, probably because of what we're about to talk about, which is that absolute shambles of a defence. And But the only upside, really, from all of that is that we have an absolutely world-class uh, finisher. Steve, to kick us off. Uh, I just want to say we didn't establish that at all. Ben said false to Rob Holding being bad. So but he, I, I, I so told me he, he, he was wrong. So <laughs> <laughs> and the same with David Luiz against Manchester City. He was good. Well, this time around in most other games, he's bad. One um, uh, sideshow bob uh, shaped um, swallow does not make a summer. It's very true. That's all I'm going to say. Talk to me about your thoughts on the game. Let's talk about um, the lineup. Were you expectant to see so, so many first teamers, Steve, or did you expect Arteta to do mega rotation? Uh, no, I don't think I expected mega rotation. Just because one, you want to get a bit of, especially after the Villa game, you wanted to get a bit of momentum going into the game on Saturday, um, and you've got to be kind of professional. You know, a lot of teams had certain things riding on that game so we had to play our part in in the season yeah but did you not ben i'll ask you this one did you not take a sharp intake of breath anytime any player went near any one of our half decent players i.e tierney or obamiang or <laughs> i'd even say granite jacker at this stage did you not go <gasps> every time yeah i can't I... The thing was was when the Jacker was on the yellow card, I was thinking, right, please take him off, please take him off, please take him off, because at like any moment he could sort of flip. But I kind of, I suppose it, Arteta sees how important those three characters are in the team, so he, he was probably thinking, you know, we need to see this out. Like Steve said, we kind of had to be professional and see it out, basically, because if we were going to draw that drop points there, that would have been not good. That would have been worse than our defence. So the thing is. You say we had to be professional, but I do question how professional it is when you go 3 nil up and are absolutely cruising and then you just decide to go full circus show. Um, because <laughs> let's be honest, I know Watford were going down and they uh, were going to create chances because they just had to throw everything at us. But it's Watford, they're pants. Like they're actually terrible. They Like if you look at their team, their squad and say, how many of those players would you go, I'd take him? Like 
Steve would probably say Sar because he hates Pepe, but you know. <laughs> what you wouldn't say Sar? You wouldn't say Sar? No, I think Pepe is like I said before. I think he's mustard, mate. And no, I but in terms of a squad, good. you wouldn't take him. Better football. We, we we don't need him. We're stocked full of uh, wide players. We need some flipping creativity. Oh, and. It's, this sounds weird, me saying this, given the amount of centre halves that we've got, but we do need centre halves as well. Right? <laughs> it's like they've played some sort of um, uh, a reverse Russian roulette or something, and they're just like fire as many centre backs at our club as possible, and one of them eventually might be good. Um, talk to me, Ben, about the formation and the back two: um, David Luiz and Rob Holding as a central defensive partnering. How psyched were you to see that, and how much did it succeed? Oh my, <laughs> dive bombs. <laughs> it was terrible. But it, again, it's, I suppose there's two schools of thought here, right? It's maybe Arteta was kind of looking at that formation to see maybe that's something for next year. Obviously, like Xhaka dropping in, picking up the ball and stuff. But as for those two at the back, they were absolutely dire. Like that was like the worst, the worst <laughs> that we, yeah. like it, it came out, didn't it? Um, I, ju- I just, I seem, I just feel a bit confused about like, like Socrates, like is he alive? Like, I no. would have, I would have put him in just to see. Obviously, Arteta's ruled him out completely, but me, I would have put him in just to be like, what's he got? Because Bob was terrible, and mm. I, I don't think he's amazing. Like, but he, he turns up in the the like previous Cup final, and, and obviously against Man City, he turned up and he was really great, but. Uh, He's, he's got a turning. He's got a turning circle like a Ford Mondeo, a 1998 Ford Mondeo, doesn't he? Like he just, the cutty sock. <laughs> he's just. He's just. It he doesn't have pace. He's not blessed with pace. If you basically have a team that gets you penned in, and he's got bodies with him, because he made a few clearances yesterday, but at the same time, he's still. It he just. It just wasn't good. He just. He looks. It, it, he's not great. He's all right with the ball at his feet, but he's not amazing. He's better than Sokradis. He's he's not got any recovery pace. His positioning at times is okay-ish. He's he's all right in the air, but not amazing. And he does fall asleep a little bit. And that doesn't really make for the type of defender that I'm thinking Arteta's going to build his team around. And then when you get Luis, I mean, that oh my God. penalty... Hang on, Chris. Hang penalty. on. I'm just going to call the police. I just need to declare a murder. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve, on. David Luiz, the penalty thoughts. Never a penalty. Didn't touch him, ref. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those moments where, for a split second, I was like, "You can't let him shoot and give him the penalty." And then you watch it again. You're like, "Yeah, that was definitely, definitely a penalty." Um, I don't know if I'm just used to like thinking about Murtasaka, but I think maybe he's got a bit more pace than what we give him credit for. Um, but going back to Socrates, I think, um, and I don't mean he's fast, he's not like Davison Sanchez fast. Going back to Socrates, that was the weirdest one for me because with Mustafi out, those two, Holding and Louise, actually become really important for the weekend. So why not chuck him in? Because it's not like a Ozil situation or a Gunduzi situation where he's completely frozen him out. He's been in squads, right? He's, you know, he's, he's actually been in squads. So. How he didn't get any game time, I thought was really quite strange. Um, what, but... I, what I thought was just odd, right, is he changed the formation to a back four. OK, you're experimenting because the game doesn't mean anything. Fine. So why not just like you kind of what you've just said, Steve, why not experiment with all of the players that won't play in the cup final? Because there's absolutely no way in hell that Arteta can surely have looked at that yesterday and say, yeah, definitely four at the back for uh, for Chelsea the next weekend, lads. That's that's hundred percent what we're doing. It just it's not going to happen. So he's going to revert back to the back three, and essentially we haven't really learned anything from that game other than um, Mike Dean does not like giving us penalties. Um, I will point out at terrible. this stage oh, we incredible. haven't we haven't that's learned anything, strange. but neither is Frank Lampard. To be fair, yeah, but he's um. <laughs> Although he probably has learned that we won't play a back four. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're saying off. that's what that's what he's basing it on. So Frank Lampard's yeah, he's going, tactical knowledge. Arteta's oh, gone gonna crazy. Like, and he's going, yeah. I'm going to play this way so that he doesn't know how we're going to play. And then when he, when you see him like shouting at them and all the drinks breaks, he was like, you've got to play better. Otherwise, Lampard will know we're not going to play this formation. <laughs> <laughs> 
I like that. <laughs> okay, I hope that's true. I hope that's true. <laughs> it's like play better, but not that much better. Yeah, not really yeah. bad. Just somewhere in between yeah. good and and average. That's that's all I want us to do, lads. And that's pretty much what we got, wasn't it? I mean, we, David Luiz for the second. Go on, Steve. Sorry. I'm just saying about the, the whole professionalism question about going three new up and stuff. But we were terrible even when we went three new up. Like it, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how we were three new up. It was because we've got well. Because Mike Dean was for, literally forced, you could see it in his face, he was forced under duress to give us a penalty. This is the same guy, remember, that absolutely hates us. But even this season, um, he's basically ignored uh, Sagradis' shirt pull inside the box at Sheffield, at Sheffield United, which was at 0-0, which would have given us it was a stonewall penalty. You've got Nicola Pepe as well at, against Sheffield United at the Emirates, which was just sived out inside the box. Mike Dean just waves it away. He does not like us. He begrudges giving us these sort of things it's fine hopefully he can retire soon and we can all move on out with our lives i don't know why he hasn't retired yet it feels like he's been in football about 40 years he's been the bane of our lives for 40 years but we we move on we move on but um it was a stonewall penalty on lacazette it was an absolutely cool composed finish by um Aubameyang. and then the second the second goal was weird wasn't it ben because like i don't know about you but when i watched that live it was like in slow motion it was like the most averagely hit pass mm. into the corner and even Kieran Tierney seemed a bit embarrassed by it mm. yeah, but that was the highlight I think because it was it was that his first goal it was wasn't it second. he was just like was it his second he was just like oh I've done it and then there was a little celebration he ran back that's what I like about him he's just he's one of us isn't he yeah. love it yeah, love he it. was just like meh this is such a meh yeah, God's sake two. and then off he goes does it and, again love him but, but again, like how terrible Watford are, it's basically just a, for the third goal. It's just throw in and then a Watford player just standing and watching Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang just shift the ball in the air and just knock it in. And you're watching that thinking, these are so bad. How can, how can we, we, we surely can't make this difficult for ourselves, could we? Step forward, David Luiz. But actually, <laughs> to be fair, like Saar just roasts his man. Steve, mm. doesn't he? On that third goal, he roasts. Sorry, for the second goal that we conceded, Saar roasts his man on the left-hand side. Then you've got um, the ball in, and David Luiz just doesn't look like he's on the planet. But the difference is, I think if that was Teeny defending Saar, I think it wouldn't have been as easy getting that ball in because Kalasinac. When Kalasinac came on, it looked even worse than what we had done. It, I didn't think it was possible, Definitely. but he did look even worse than what we had done. Hundred percent. Yeah. Do you think if we've got a back three there, we stop out, we snuff out that? Because if Sars beaten the man, then you've got Tierney over that side that just covers the space and probably stops him from putting the ball in. I don't know. I just kind of feel like a three at the back would have made a difference there. Yeah, quite potentially. Or even if Tierney, there was one point where Mariapa, and it might have been Sar, someone overlapped Mariapa. And it was literally Tierney out wide on his own. And he managed to go both go to the ball, the man with Mariapa, and then track the runner and stop the cross. It was like, yeah, just go. He was the one where he did go down. I was crapping myself. I was like, no, yeah. we can't <laughs> do without him in the final. Yeah. No, because Mustafi's already had like his limbs removed by the sound of it. His limbs removed via his butt, um, <laughs> which, you know. That doesn't that doesn't sound fun and doesn't sound like uh, we'll be seeing him anytime soon. But let's have a let's have a quick little uh, Ben moment for um, getting a little bit excited and over the top over Emmy Martinez and particularly that Danny Welbeck save where he's flicked it. Talk to me, Ben. Mate, <laughs> <laughs> what's happened? Like, is this one of these like meet you things where he's, it's like his purple pack <laughs> or he's actually good because he's pulling stuff like. It's the way he claims it. I get like so aroused as he comes through the air, just claims it. You're like, oh my god! <laughs> so what we're saying is, you wouldn't give Leno his place back for the cup final. No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Why is that, Ben? I feel oh, like you're. Yeah. Very, I feel like you're pressing <laughs> into a corner live cool. on the internet. Cool. Do you uh, talk I to just, me about your feelings between the two goalkeepers? Oh, I, I think that we've seen it. Is that he is more commanding in the air? He sort of dominates his box a lot more. Like Leno is a good keeper, but I just think uh, like Emmy kind of almost complements our faults, as in that we are crap when the ball gets crossed in. Because if you've got a certain six foot gorgeous Frenchman in blue, 
and that your centre half can't head it, but you've got a keeper that can come and claim it. Yeah. Kind of, I think it feels like going that direction. Well, the only time will tell if he can continue this. Like, I hope he does for him because he's been at the club for such a long time and he seems like such a nice bloke as well, which is nice. Um, but we just hope it doesn't sort of fall off. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does feel like he basically came out of his mother's womb and they wrapped him in an Arsenal shirt and then said, you're in, you're in the youth academy, Emmy, because he's been there so long, hasn't he? Let's be honest mm. with you. Um, Steve, we got a question on the keepers, actually, didn't we, from uh, the Twitters? Yeah, we did. What was it? Read it out for us. It was. Um, I, I pretend I'm reading it, but I should remember it. Um, <laughs> it. It was. If you could get a player in like Jack Grealish, but you had to raise the money by selling one of our goalkeepers, would you do it? I read that from my hand. Nice. Ben? Ben? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that just it? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, because you would. But like, I know this is like championship manager stuff, but it's what you do on podcasts. You talk nonsense. Um, <laughs> but you don't. we don't need two keepers of the same ability. We need... To... Yeah. Some creative midfielders or a centre back. <laughs> we need a lot of creative midfielders um, yeah. because we seem to be an injury-prone football team, and it feels like it felt it's felt like that ever since we moved into the Emirates. And so I get the feeling that buying one eighty million pound because let's face it, Jack Grealish, Villa, and now that they're up, they're going to go, yeah, sure, you can have him, Man United, or you can have him, Arsenal, uh, eighty million quid. They'll they'll do something stupid. They'll be like Palace last season with. I think they would have said. He's already said we've got billionaire owners. He'll cost a lot, a lot of money. Yeah, so they're going to... It'll be a, a Man United who'll just drop silly sort of Harry Maguire money on someone like Grealish. And we can't it's afford that. Well. We have to... We have to. No, of course he's not. We have to take a punt on another player. But that's why I think someone like Smith Rowe is going to be important as well as almost like an understudy because we're going to need to rotate those players because they're going to get injured. You know, we need to see something uh, from an internal solution as well as an external Yuck. solution from the creative side. Do you not think, Stephen? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I don't think, yeah, you can't just pin all your hopes on Smith Rowe, but hopefully he'll get some game time next season. Mm. Um, I'd like to see some externals as well. Um, but yeah, he's looked good, hasn't he? Mm. And so let's, I think we've done the Watford game. Let's uh, move on from it. Let's put it in the bin, much like let's put the whole season in the bin. But do you have any abiding memories of this season other than you're glad that it's over? Uh, I'll, st I'll stay with Steve on that one, if that's what I mean. Um, I think one of the biggest moments was Martinez showing he's that good that he can kick a ball off Firmino into the post and it will still be absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> Ben, what's your moment of the season? I suppose what it has to be enjoy. It has to be Arteta, I think. Um, I just he just embodies what I want Arsenal to be. He says the things that we are thinking in a, such a good way. Do you know what I mean? Like he yeah. he's like, look, we're rubbish, and it's not good. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he comes across so great about it. But he's honest, isn't he? And he's he's open about the sort of Ozil things. People have openly said to him. He said, "Well, I can't talk anymore." Basically, saying, "Look, there's something going on. You'll find out." He's done the same with Wenduzi. He's spoken about transfers. He's had the bollocks to be on live TV. Like, look, we've just done this. It's fantastic, but we need more players. It just if this doesn't work out for him in terms of not being able to get the money, at least he's done right by the. The, the team and the club basically so yeah but this big. is this is the thing the thing that's the thing that scares me like Arteta can do an amazing job the club can just be penny pinching and then in 18 months or two years he's just like well you haven't really given me what I want I'll go on another project but as fans we're still stuck here <laughs> we will to deal with the Sanyes yeah. and the and the and the and the, and the Cronkies and that that's a bit scary from my perspective. I'll tell you what my moment is. It just popped into my head. I just really enjoyed the Gabriel Martinelli goal against Chelsea, which was where mm. Angola Kante just fell over. And he's basically just bombed it down. Because the thing that I loved about that is no fear. Like the amount of footballers that could have had, because that the whole episode, that whole from when he touches the ball to when he puts it away, there's a good three, four seconds, maybe five seconds. And yes, look at that. And Golo Conte just stretching his arms out. Love it. Um, <laughs> it so, was a bad touch as well, wasn't it? 
Yeah. His first it touch was a, was a bad, it was a fantastic goal. It was, goal. It was amazing, yeah. but it was a bad, and then Kante fell over. And it yeah. Was, yeah. But my point in there is like so many footballers, if they're given that amount of time and space, like yeah. they get they get to the keeper and they're like, what am I going to do here? Shit. Whereas he just mm. knew and he's just got that confidence. I just hope that this injury that he's picked up doesn't set him back because you look at what happens with holding like in a three against, uh, you know, last season, he looked good this season shadow of a player and you do wonder about his long-term future you just hope that martinelli doesn't suffer from that because we are going to need him next season because we are not going to have the money to spend big so we are going to need the sackers and the martinelli's and the smith rows um potentially the reese nelson's to step up certainly you know you've got people like tierney's going to need to step up um We've already seen how Martinez, although well, Martinez is 26, 27, so can't say he's a young kid anymore, but in keeper's terms he is, um, I guess. But I think that was the one that, that really stood out for me. And I'm uh, that, one of the few sort of positive moments where I actually went get in there, because as you've said, Ben, once or twice, I just, I, at times this season, I have not celebrated goals. And I think you, you feel the same, don't you? Mm. Yeah, because it... Yeah. It, uh, it's a bit like negative and it's a bit me being silly but it's you know that we're just going to sort of collapse or they're going to yeah. score and it's just it's just a low point it's been the, one of the biggest low points like supporting Arsenal I think the whole sort of Emery thing the way it carried on the way we were like look just pull the trigger on this this is ridiculous like we can see mm-hmm. it's rubbish the players heads have gone and it just went on and on and on and you just think going back you look at it and you think well I can almost I can't, but I can almost understand why they went with him because of they were thinking, right, we need some of the experience. This guy's uh, managed massive European clubs um, and it just wasn't working. And they must kick themselves now that they thought, you know what, they, like three, four weeks earlier, it could have been different. Like, yeah, yeah. I, re- I realise the whole COVID things happened, but three, four weeks more prep with the players, getting these messages across quicker a few more positive results and we could have been slightly higher up the table. Um, yeah. Even, even so, after the, the final last season, we were embarrassed in that game. Yeah. yeah well, actually, that's a good segue because lots of people are talking about the the similarities and the synergies with 2017. Even in 2017, we lost Shkodran Mustafi to injury um, and we, re- we ended up having players that you know, that was the Mertesacker Saka final and Mertesacker's Saka's had the game of his life. But this, I, I couldn't make a case for us in 2017, if I'm completely honest with you. I was in the pub, I was in JJ Moons beforehand in, um, uh, in Kingsbury. And I remember talking to a few of the lads and saying, Chelsea are champions. Like, we're just here for the day out. We, we're probably going to get battered. And we pulled out an absolutely blinding performance. But I'm struggling to see the same because I think we don't have we have the creative we have the goal scoring threat in Aubameyang but that creative piece scares me Steve what do you let's talk about the FA Cup final now then because we've got um we've got seven and a half minutes left so let's just spend it talking about the FA Cup final and how petrified we are so how petrified (laughs) are you I feel right about it really yeah I'm looking forward to it (laughs) lies Oh, I am. I really you hope. On Pulisic, throne of I really hope. I really hope Pulisic doesn't play because he's uh, pretty alright, isn't he? But um, no, I'm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to think about what he'll do when he plays Saka as left wing back and bring Tierney in. Don't know. So that's the question, isn't it? It's how fit is Bellerin? Uh, I'll switch it to Ben now. How fit is Bellerin? Um, does he play Maitland Niles because the guy is, you know, let's face it, his engine is good. Um, he can get up and down the field. A better I feel like he's more physical a physical presence than Bellerin or are you playing Bellerin on the right and Maitland Niles on the left um, Saka seems to have disappeared in recent games doesn't he so what's your thoughts as to what he should do in the final Ben um, assuming Bellerin is fit I can't answer that otherwise but I would go with the same so have Maitland Niles on the left Bellerin would be right back three of um I suppose you're going to have to go Bob, Louise and Tierney midfield and the attack, the three amigos up front. And then I think you have to do the same sort of thing. Sit deep, let them have it, catch them on the counter because they are terrible at the back. They can go forward, but they are terrible at the back. Yeah, they're there for the taking. So are we. 
I think they've got more creativity. We know that. Like, we need to put that in the header, like the caveat that we are crap, so we don't have to keep saying it over and over again. But (laughs) they aren't as great. They granted they can go forward. Yes, they've got someone who can. You look at it and you think, well, Pulisic is going to just run holding into the ground. He's going to whip balls in. Giroud will jump up above our centre halves and head it. Like oh, that's pretty basic, but that's what's going to happen, right? They're going to get, try and get down the sides of us, lob balls into the box, and he's going to head it. But if they can't do that, what else are they going to do? I haven't seen enough from them to be like, whoa. Do you mm. know what I mean? I, I think they should be as scared of us as we are of them. Look what <laughs> I, no, but look, yeah, but look what we've just done to Come Man on, City. No, no, I'm serious. Like we, there was... we just battered Man City. We didn't batter. Two nil. It was well, a great performance. I was very happy, but there were chances. You know, Ster- Sterling doesn't drag it wide. You know, of course, um, yeah, but that's that's where the caveat is just to, of us being like rubbish at the back. But I think going forward, they are as scared as we are, as in the forwards. It's just whose defence is worse on the day, basically. That's what it's going to come down to. Who goes yeah. in goal for Chelsea? Do they play Kepa? Yeah, we're going to have some right bants if he's in goal. Kepa like a kipper. Yeah, mate. But I don't know. I'm, I'm a bit like Steve, actually. I kind of <laughs> slip flop between it. But I, I could see us doing it this time. I think it'll be Caballero, would not it? Because he played in the semi and then he played in the it, league. Yeah, he'll play. I just was hoping it would be Kepa. <laughs> <laughs> he might play Kepa and then the guy has his absolute blinder and we're all sitting here next month. <laughs> yeah, he's like an octopus. So, yeah. <laughs> And Cavalier is 903, so, you know, either way, he should <laughs> yeah, be. He was in the yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Genius. Um, just quickly, just with the final one, Ben, and then we'll just ask Steve about how he set it up. Um, why would you not play Saka left? Just I, I know this sounds silly, but I kind of feel like on the right, they'd have William and... Uh, Jane, Reese James, is that right? Yeah, they're going to get. William didn't play in the league because he was out. I don't know if that's. He wasn't even in the squad. I don't know if that's. Purely like, like, I just feel like we need kind of a couple of athletes at fullbacks. Um, Saka's absolutely fantastic, but we're going to need to defend. Like, you nailed it, Chris, really. It's a battle of the defences. Whoever's defence is is worse loses the game, basically. It's not on attack, it's purely on defence. And we need to stack it in our favour slightly and I think it's make the Niles. And that's where I get worried. Sorry, not so much the defence. It's how good will our, our attack be <clears throat> if we are so toothless in terms of our creativity? Mm-hmm. Like you look at the numbers this season and it actually is embarrassing from our, our midfield. It's almost like what midfield, you know? Mm-hmm. And if, <clears throat> I mean, if he plays so... Actually, Steve, we'll stick on you then. So is there any changes that you think will be made other than what Ben said? And is that the team that you would play? I would play Saka. Would you? And I'm thinking of early season left back Saka, not late season further forward, kind of playing right, left or middle Saka. You know, he's played everywhere. But you think about him as a left back and he was pretty damn decent there. And if you think about his understanding with Aubameyang, it seems Tierney's got a bit of an understanding with Aubameyang. If you can get the three of them on that kind of wavelength, yeah, that's quite decent. Oh, I have a question. I have a question. Right, so if you've got Saka starting, who's on the bench to come on, make a change? We don't have that. We might as well not even bother with the bench because but, it's essentially, it's essentially non-existent, stick, isn't it? Are you going to stick a certain German on the bench? He won't play. Arteta, I think Arteta would, but I think he's been told, you know, this guy's on a ridiculous amount of money. We've got to shunt him out. And the only way we do that is by if he doesn't get anywhere near the first team. It wouldn't even surprise me again. I'm conspiracy theorist. Hit, uh, theorising here it wouldn't even surprise me if Arteta's probably sat Ozil down and said look you know the situation with your contract mate so sadly I can't play you so it's probably there may not even be any hard feelings between Ozil and Arteta and Arteta's just being quiet but it, there's something going on there yeah you know? I don't think that's too far fetched he came in he called him like the best player didn't he I think at the club or the most gifted player at the club he... mm. Mm. And then, you know, to not even get in the squads and stuff and for Arteta to come and talk about that we need more creativity it's kind of, yeah. I mean, I would. 
I would because it's better to have someone like Meza as you never know you could literally chuck Meza Ozil on in the 20 minutes to go and you know the likelihood is is that you know nothing happens but we <laughs> might find something you might find that he just somehow drifts into some sort of space and sees the likes the likes of a Bamiyang making mm-hmm. run on Pepe or whatever it is you know if we if we're losing if we if we're one down a couple of goals down or something like that you know you're going to get more than you're going to get more from Meza Ozil than you're going to get from Joe Willock aren't you let's mm-hmm. be honest Joe oh, yeah. Willock who will cover lots of ground but cannot finish his dinner and his passing range is well I mean it's almost like he's got a meter ruler and anything over that and he's he's done so it's it's it seems like it would make sense to me particularly when you get more more subs but um do you boys want to predict this I mean we're just coming towards the end of our um time together for this week I almost don't want to predict this because I feel like I went into I don't know about how you feel about this I'll start with you Ben and then I'll speak Last season, I, w- I had this unequivocal conviction that we were winning the Europa League. Like, I just thought it doesn't matter that Chelsea finished X number of points above us. Um, we're better than them. We can beat them. And I was, I, feel, I felt burned after that. And it's almost carried it. That hangover has carried through right till today. I still feel burned by that. And as a result, last season, where I had the confidence, this season, I don't have any confidence really going into the game um ben <laughs> what do you want me to do with that <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about the game do you want to make a prediction i'm not gonna i'm not going to make a um, prediction but i'll let you do one if you want to this is i said this the other week i'm gonna steal my quote again this is a sliding doors moment this is the Arteta gets to build something great, maybe gets a couple of transfers because we get into Europa League. I know that's we can scoff at it, but it's a little bit more money. Maybe a Bamiyang signs, but we lose it. We get tonked. We get embarrassed. A Bamiyang goes. We're gutted. We get no transfers. Our, our awake is horrible. We've oh, spoken about that. <laughs> it's a it is an utter but no, but... tie-dye disgrace. I like the home kit. I like that, but it's a it's It's a sliding doors moment. This isn't it. It's Chelsea have already got top uh, top four. They've got Champions League. Yes, they're going to want to win a trophy, but it's almost stacked in their favour because they can take their foot off the gas and they can almost just like you know that cliche enjoy the day. Whereas for us, it's again it was like the Europa League final. It's like you have to do something. You have to turn up, and we crumble generally under this sort of pressure. Yep. Players disappear. Bamiang sort of hides a little bit. He gets a little bit nervous. Lacazette does that stupid thing where he runs around in circles. Lacazette loses his head. Louise against Chelsea at the bridge. What happened there? Bang. Mental. Mental block. Bang. And you're putting all these players in this high pressure environment. But I'm quite like sitting here as a fan. I'm quite like, yes, I think we can do it. But then I look at the players and I, they don't give me the most confidence in the world. Yeah. Steve, bring us back home with some confidence because you're Please normally... Say nice, Steve. You're good. Yeah. Say nice things, please. We we will go 1-0 down, but we'll win 2-1. Oh, OK. Well, can like you make sure that happens? So that happens <laughs> somehow. Speak to someone. Speak to How us. So? <laughs> How so? I'll be there. I'm going on the bench instead of Ozil. <laughs> <laughs> You've probably got more chance, mate. <laughs> Lads, it's been brilliant as always. So we're going to go one nil down and win it two one. Um, we didn't even talk about um, Ben's tweet that he uh, retweeted, where Barcelona has offered their entire squad for Ganduzi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you said, are they drunk? Yeah, are they drunk? That, that um, place is falling down, man. Yeah. Well. The less said about that, the better. Maybe we'll talk about that next weekend, next Monday, if uh, if we've ended up losing this, rather than talk about um, the uh, the FA Cup final. But try but to we be can positive. Do it naked if we win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from the waist down. Waist down. <laughs> oh, I usually do that anyway. Do you? Do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Right, Steve. Great to talk to you again, mate. And you as always. You too, Ben. And uh, we will catch each other and we'll catch you, wonderful, valuable, dear listener or watcher, um, on the next edition, which will be our final one. And hopefully we see you on the other side and there's a cup at the end of it. So catch you later. Bye bye. (laughs) 